As part of our courses, we'll be primarily demonstrating using JupyterLab. It is nothing but a wrapper around Jupyter Notebook to explore and learn Python in interactive fashion. Let us understand how we can create Jupyter Notebook using JupyterLab and also we will see the relationship between Jupyter Notebook and IPython. We'll also go through the naming standards. We will see how to manage cells, what are different cell types we have and also we will see how to get help using Jupyter cells and also we'll perform uh, all these tasks in the pursuit of exploring these things. That being said, I will be demonstrating on Windows. So in this case, I'll be using Anaconda to launch Jupyter. I will actually cover how to launch Jupyter as part of the lab on uh, Ubuntu at a later point in time. For now, just try to get familiar using Windows in case if you have a powerful Windows machine and if you want to use Windows itself to learn, this might help you. That being said, to launch Jupyter Lab, you can click on launch here. It will take care of launching Jupyter Lab for you. Jupyter Lab is nothing but a wrapper on top of classic Jupyter notebook. Once you have environment up and running using Jupyter Lab, you should be able to get to classic as well. We will demonstrate those aspects as well. Now there is an untitled Python notebook. Let me delete this. First, I will be creating the folder. The folder name will be something like uh, fundamentals of Python or something. Whatever course you are going to take, make sure you name accordingly. So I'm saying fundamentals of Python. It's up to you what you want to name it, but I'm naming it, it like this. So if you want to create the folder, you just have to click on this, it will take care of creating the folder for you. By default, it will be named as untitled. You have to give appropriate name. Now you can double click on this. Then you can actually create the notebook using this launcher. By default, launcher will be made available whenever JupyterLab is started. You can use this launcher and create the notebook. Once you start creating the notebooks, launcher might not be available, it might be closed. In that case, if you want to get to the launcher, you just have to click on this. It will take care of creating a launcher for you. If I click on this, now it have created a second launcher, which I don't want. That's why I'm closing this. Also, you can actually go to file and then say new and then notebook. Then you should be able to create the notebook directly. So either you can use launcher or you can use the file menu new, new notebook to create the notebook. If I say select, it will select the Python 3 as kernel. Otherwise, it, it will select without any kernel and it will actually create the notebook. So in this case, I'll be using Python 3. Whether you use launcher or whether you use file menu to create the notebook, by default, the name of the notebook will be untitled.ipynb. In this case, we want to name it as getting started. Okay, so the way you can rename this is you can right click on this and then say rename. Then you can actually say getting started. You can have spaces and also you can have uppercase or lowercase as part of the names. But the extension have to be .ipynb. Now the Python notebook is created for us. Now let's get into the details about uh, how to get the Python version and all. But before that, I wanted to launch terminal and demonstrate how to access terminal also. I have done that before as well. I'm actually covering that and the time. Either you can go to the launcher and click on terminal. If it is Mac or Linux, it will actually get you the Linux based terminal. If it is Windows, it will get you PowerShell. You can also launch the terminal by going to file new terminal. You can see the PowerShell based terminal here. You should be able to run all valid uh, PowerShell commands here. Let me close this. You can actually say ls hyphen ltr. Let me actually zoom in a bit here. Because ls hyphen ltr is a Linux command, it failed. However, if you say dir, it will actually list the files and folders in this location. PowerShell also provide SSH. If you want to connect to a remote server, you can leverage SSH and connect to the remote server. I think it also provides Git. I'm not 100% sure. Git is not provided. Only SSH is provided, which you can leverage to connect to the remote servers. Anyway, we don't use this feature quite often from the terminal. Typically, we tend to validate our files and directories using terminal with appropriate commands. This is how you can actually launch the terminal. Let me close it for now and let me go to the material. Now I want to write a couple of uh, lines of code to get the Python version. For that, all you need to do is you just have to import Python version from platform. You can say from platform, you can hit tab. It will Then you can say import. Even this one, you can hit tab and it will actually suggest or autofill. Then you can say Python underscore version. Even this one, you can actually get the suggestions. Now you should be able to run this. Uh, this is called a cell. And if you look at this, it is similar to whatever we have seen with respect to IPython. Both IPython and uh, this one are same. So Jupyter is nothing but a web-based environment on top of IPython. Now I should be able to say Python underscore version in circular brackets like this. 
and you can see the python version here we are using 3.8 version of python with anaconda that's why we are seeing 3.8.5 here you can also use print uh, and pass this to print to actually print as a string but you can directly see the information like this as well now let's spend some time in understanding some of the key concepts with respect to jupyter the first one is about launching the classic notebook you might get the material from the public uh, domain and most of the demos in the public domain might be using classic notebook rather than jupyter lab as I have emphasized earlier, JupyterLab is nothing but a wrapper on top of Classic Notebook. If you want to access the Classic Notebook, you have to click on this. And then if you scroll down, there is Launch Classic Notebook. You can click on this and it will actually launch the Classic Notebook for the same Jupyter-based environment on top of which we are seeing the JupyterLab here. If you look at the port number, it says 8888 slash lab. In this case, it says 8888 slash tree. The port number is same. However, the uh, endpoint is a bit different. Now you can access the fundamentals of Python folder which we have created earlier using JupyterLab environment and also you can actually see the Jupyter Notebook here. This is the classic view of Jupyter Notebook or this is classic Jupyter Notebook. Now you should be able to run the cells the way we have ran earlier. Earlier as part of the lab we just ran using shift enter. Same thing can be used here. So if you want to run using shortcuts, you can say shift enter. It will take care of running it for you. Also, you can select the cell and you should be able to click on this run button to actually run that particular cell. It will move to the next cell automatically for you. If you want to use Jupyter Lab, if you want to use run button, this is the run button. It is not as obvious as it is in uh, classic, but the logo is similar. This is how you should be able to run the code in a particular cell. Now, there are different cell types. These are all of type code. That's why we are able to type the code and we are able to run. But if you expand this, there are also other cell types. They are nothing but markdown and raw. For some reason, it is not staying. Now you can see we have markdown as well as raw. For some reason, it is not working. Uh, it is going off whenever I unclick the mouse or whenever I remove the click from the mouse. But luckily, it stick this time. Earlier, I don't know why it, it was disappearing, but now uh, we can see it. So if you click on this, you can see different cell types. You can also use magic for these cell types. For example, if you wanted to create a cell using markdown, you can say percentage percentage markdown like this, and then you can use your markdown uh, skills to actually document the material of your code. So in this case, understanding Jupyter environment. You can run this. Okay, I think a cell magic percentage percentage MD is not available here. Probably it could be percentage MD. Let me see. Even this one is not working. I think we just have to use the cell type for now. If we change it to markdown, you, you see the, uh, the highlight also changed. Now if you run this, it will render as a header one tag. So this is how you should be able to use different cell types. Also, if you wanted to delete a particular cell, you can select it and then you can say x x is a shortcut to delete or you can also use this to cut the cell uh, to paste the cut cell or copied cell you can use v you can see here it have pasted the cell you can type as many times as you want and it will it will repeat as many times you type v you can also use c to copy and then v to paste so x is to cut and v to paste c is to copy and v to paste you can also use this one to actually copy and then click on this to paste you can actually select this copy paste or cut cut and then paste so this is how you should be able to manage the cells as part of your jupyter notebook these are some basics uh, we will be seeing quite a lot as we get into the serious uh, topics with respect to python one of the thing is you can use a magic called as percentage percentage sh as i'm running on top of windows i can run command called as dir to actually list the files Anyway, on Windows it is not working, on uh, Linux it will work. You will actually get the list of the files from underlying file system. But uh, with uh, Windows using percentage percentage sh cell, it is not working. When I run on uh, Linux or uh, Mac, you will be seeing the output for commands like ls ltr, tail, so and so forth. I'll be demonstrating primarily on Linux. If you are using Windows to learn, you need to understand about these discrepancies and uh, come up with a mitigation plan. That being said, now we have understood both CLI as well as web-based interfaces to explore Python. 
I would highly recommend you to stick to Jupyter Lab based environment. Otherwise, you can also stick to Jupyter Notebook environment and start practicing using our notebooks or any publicly available notebooks. Don't struggle too much with the Python CLI. It will demotivate you to learn Python. If you use Jupyter, definitely you can be a lot more productive and you should be able to accomplish a lot more using this web based interface to learn compared to command line interface. So make sure you're comfortable with Jupyter more than command line interface for now in the pursuit of learning. Python.